Hey, lifted up this little uh, thing here and I found a little friend. Wow, very cute. Turning. Oh yeah, baby. Vinyl, look at that. Work it, Tank, work it. Gee, I sure hope while I'm fixing this, some giant white bird doesn't. <gasps> Good morning, Epic Fortnite uh, Urban Rescue Poggers Pranksters. Uh, that was my first full night sleeping here at the at the new farm. Man, was that rough. It wasn't that bad, but there's a lot of mosquitoes in here because we're missing the floorboards. They come from the floor. They're coming up from the floor. But Poggers was keeping me company. Uh, we were cuddling up together. And uh, I thought of something. I had an idea. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a mosquito net over this top part of the bunk bed. Uh, at least for now, at least till we can get the floor fixed. And we will be able to get all the renovations done. I can sleep here without having to worry about getting West Nile virus. And we're back at the Urban Rescue Ranch. I got this giant dumpster here. I used some donation money to pay for it. Thank you all so much. Love you guys. Appreciate you. And I still have all this stuff. But Uncle Ben's doing all this by himself because Poggers doesn't help at all. And none of the volunteers want to come out for trash day. Old Uncle Ben is all alone. But that's okay because I've been listening to some good music and some podcasts, some sermons. Look at this beautiful trash can. Hopefully we'll be able to fit the rest of that crap in there i think we will all this uh wood i'm actually going to use i think that we can fit that stuff and then there's another pile in the back there by the barn and after that we will be done at that point let's see if i can cover my license plate there we go yeah oh look at this beautiful beautiful bus poggers is laying on the lover mattress might have to put your name on there too but look how handsome this man is such a good helper and boy yeah that giant pile that was right there is already gone i still need to get that stuff but i'm gonna try and get some friends to come over for that there's lots of nails there i don't want some volunteer to get spiked by a nail we already had that happen oh baby a triple take a look at that stuff I'm gonna set this stuff up very soon the place is looking dapper as always we got our nice fencing there i'm gonna get some more fencing uh next week trailers are still there oh boy love those things i think this is coyote poop or raccoon poop 50 50 Either way, there's an imposter among us. When the imposter among us is sus, <laughs> take a look at this crap. Oh, we're gonna have to get this in there as well. All of this is gonna have to go. This is all sus. This is all imposter sus. And this tire has a split rim, so I can't let anyone come back here when it comes to volunteers. There's a nice little piece of wood there. I'm gonna turn this little area into a corral. As soon as we get all these tires out, which I can't do today because the dumpster won't take them. A friend of mine really wanted this camper, but I don't think he realizes how nasty and irreparable it is. Nothing is truly irreparable, but this is probably not worth it. And that's coming from a guy who's trying to fix a crack house. And yeah, I got flowers ever heard of them i think i know what this is man are you guys in for a treat sub to the patreon to see video after video of me getting tortured by red ants gonna go ahead and grab these garbage bags but take a look i already made some use of five of the tires it's kind of pointless because we have a lot more that can't even really fit in here but pretty cool we also got this donated a little t-post digger but first I need to see where the gas lines are before I start jamming these in the ground. Made that mistake at the old place. Okay, now for the moment of truth. It rained a lot yesterday, so let's see where the water is. Interesting. Okay, none in here. Good, I think for the most part this whole area is pretty safe when it comes to being protected from the water. And this is the other part of the property that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, it goes to that tree line there. And then on the other side of this tree line is the barn and everything else back there. And it's actually really private and nice back here. This is where I really kind of fell in love with this spot. This is kudzu, I think. We're definitely gonna need some goats. No, it's not, something else. Look at all this Indian paintbrush though, guys. Wow, and look at these mesquite trees. Very cool. We can cut a lot of these down and smoke up some cheese. But as you guys can see, this is why I fell in love with the place. Uh, look at the vultures up there, that's cool. Very private. When you walk back here, it's a little bit more quiet. You're not right in the road and it doesn't in any way feel like you're in the middle of the city, but we are. So, ton of fire ants though. But the best thing about this place is that we can be literally 
five minutes from everything in the city here, but at the same time, have all of this open space. And all of these mesquite trees, I'm gonna just cut some out, but keep a bunch of them. So this is where Kevin and Karen and ostriches are gonna be, uh, that we're gonna get from both rescue situations and whenever, anytime somebody has a baby with curled toes or any other issues, kind of rehabilitate it and then we'll keep them. And the plan right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you guys, when we start hatching ostrich eggs, we can sell them to people as pets, not to eat, but as pets. And uh, that money is going to go right back into the rescue, into the wildlife rehab. So we're, what we're gonna have is a really sustainable system where we're not, is that coyote? This whole area is gonna get developed eventually, but the sweet thing is, this is right in our backyard. And I'm, my plan is to get permission from the landowner. So whenever the kids come though, from the city schools and we do our educational programs, they're gonna come out and they're gonna get to see ostrich eggs hatching in incubators. They're gonna come out and they're gonna potentially be able to ride horses if we do that. That might be a big liability, but we'll be able to just come back here and see all the Karens and Kevin's running around. And then the money that we get from those eggs, which is relatively lucrative, you know, it just depends on the year. Sometimes you have a great yield. Sometimes you lose everything. Sometimes the power goes out and all the eggs don't finish incubating. That happened to a few of my friends. And then at that point, the money will just be going right back to the wildlife and we're gonna get a lot more wildlife. There is, there is no shortage of wildlife in Waco. In fact, there's way too much for just me and I'm the only rehabber for hours. I called every extermination company in uh, Waco and then Temple and the other areas and their typical course of action whenever they get an orphaned, any kind of wildlife is just kill it. Right off the bat, they just euthanize it. We have hundreds of, of babies that would be coming to us and I, for that I need a whole facility I need more volunteers and I need trained people so that's going to take a lot of time and what my goal is to start if we can't do that with fundraising and the goal is to do it sustainably and I really want to show you guys and show other people how you can sustainably and ethically farm and rescue hand in hand you can do both you can love the animals on both ends you can raise them and then you can sell the babies just like we sell the chicks i will personally chat with any of you guys on instagram about any of this if you, if you feel like it's unethical because i i have thought about this long and hard i might not even post this but what difference is there between an ostrich and a chicken what makes a chicken any more valuable than an ostrich so if you have any issues with me hatching ostrich eggs and selling them to people as pets particularly and they will be coming from rescues but they'll still be their offspring if you have any issues with that let me know because i feel like it's the same thing as chickens it's still one life and they're still just as dumb uh, they just can feed a lot more people if we were selling the eggs for people to eat i think one ostrich egg is 20 normal egg with one ostrich egg you can save a heck of a lot of people feed a lot of people at least hoggers is going crazy one last thing i'll say before i give you an update on the rest of the work that we're doing is i am so happy that we're here because poggers is so happy this is the life that every dog deserves especially every big dog every dog in my opinion deserves to be able to just go and that's why i'm so thankful and happy that he has the ability to do this let me know in the comments what critiques or advice you guys have. Uh, the biggest thing first though is just gonna be for us to get some sturdy, good fencing up around the perimeter here. This back area, even with the city ordinance, I looked it up, we can legally have a lot. <laughs> well, obviously we're not gonna go overboard, but ostriches and emus and rare are considered livestock here. With all of the vegetation here and everything else, I think we could have a solid, I think we could have two trios. We could have six ostriches back here. Or we could have like 20 Karens. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. There's all other kinds of things. We're gonna be getting a lot of deer that are wild and rescues from meat farms and everything else. The biggest ostrich farm in the Western half of the world, the Western hemisphere, is actually, I think 40 minutes from here. Okay, I texted every one of our volunteers and everybody on the board. Oh man, I can't wait for them to come even though none of them are replied. I'm sure they'll be here before I'm done with this pile. Cleaning out this pile here and I saw something in this tree. Wow, very cute. Mmm, sure is nice to have some beautiful young boys to help me with this work. <laughs> yeah! Work it, Tank, work it! Old Uncle Ben always provides for his son. These are skinks. And no tank, they're not venereal diseases. They're little, little, little reptiles, I think. They're not amphibians. I mean, that's kind of what a reptile is, an amphibian. Not necessarily. Some of them are amphibious, like a turtle. Look at this beautiful baby boy. What do you think of this tank? Here you go. The hell? Oh, that's so cool. Dude, look at them little things, man. I know, isn't he cute? Yeah. 
He looks like an artificial lure. You want to catch a largemouth bass? <laughs> Hello there, little friend. He's like, hmm, what's going on? They don't have eyeballs? Really? Wait, what? Is, is this just antenna? Yeah, so if, see, he's trying to search if there's something there. So if you poke, <laughs> he knows there's something there and he's going to start turning. You see how he's turning? Mm, beautiful little thing. Mmm, look at this nice new carpeting. See if there's any snake friends under here. Maybe back it up a little bit more. Oh yeah, baby. Hey, lifted up this little uh, thing here and I found a little friend. Oh, hello, little friend. What kind of snake are you? You're flattening your head, which makes me think you're poisonous. He's not Whoa. poisonous. That's just a, it looks like a water snake. All right, this should be the last load. Got all this stuff and a bunch of carpeting that was covering this. Turns out the bottom of this is all concrete. Hey, we can turn that into a barn and this whole area into an extension of the barn. And I found this. We have some capital records, some of these fellas and LL Cool J, baby. LL Cool J's bad. It's still in there, baby. Vinyl. Look at that. Uh, just because it's wet doesn't mean it doesn't work. The Pointer Sisters, Grover Washington Jr. Soul Box. I don't know what that is. He hit the jackpot. I found some other things that I can't show you guys, sadly, but for the most part, all of this trash is cleared up. Found the big snake under there, and I put him in the woods over there. And that's all the trash that we can take that can fit in the dumpster, and we really got our money's worth on that run. Okay, we got a heck of a lot of stuff in here. Just need to get the rest of that and then those carpets and we'll be done. All right, looks like we did it. This is the last of all the crap. I sure hope this isn't uh, more than three tons because if it is, I'm gonna have to pay a, a pretty penny. Thanks for your help. Yeah. What up MTV, welcome to my crib. Come on in. Isn't it nice? Isn't this nice? <laughs> isn't this really nice? Yeah, I got a bunk bed. Don't mean to brag. But yeah, tomorrow we're getting the foundation repaired. Uh, this, I'm gonna put a mosquito net over because uh, at night I get eaten by mosquitoes. Yeah, before I have everything here, I think I already showed that in the last video. But uh, next time I film, I should have a foundation repair under there. Probably not, we'll see. And, uh, and then we'll be good to go and we'll start working on the pipes and electric. Okay, guys, that's it. That's all you get for today. It's been a long day. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. Somehow Vinny got out. I don't really know how. <laughs> it's only a matter of time.